Another integral part of Chris's work is casting the bronze, an art in itself. This is where the clay or wax model is transformed into permanent bronze. This process involves many steps and hours. There are a number of casting techniques, but the one Chris uses for his work is called the lost wax method, an ancient form with a tradition that extends back thousands of years and is capable of exquisitely capturing the finest details of a work of art. The casting process begins with making a soft mold of the original sculpture that minutely captures every nuance the artist has put into it. This soft mold is then encased and held in a hard plaster or fiberglass form called the mother mold. And once made, the original sculpture is no longer needed in the process. Into this mother mold, molten wax is poured to make a hollow wax replica of the original sculpture. When cooled, this near perfect image can be further worked by the artist, either to make minor corrections or major changes. One of these must be made for each casting of the original sculpture. To each wax model, a master craftsman attaches wax rods at key points, which will later serve as channels for the molten bronze to flow into the mold and allow air to escape as it fills with metal. The next step in the process calls for the wax copy to be encased in a hard ceramic shell. This is accomplished by dipping the model into a thick liquid slurry and dusted with fine heat-resistant sand or stucco. This process is repeated six to ten times until a thick casing is developed that can withstand the intensity and pressures of casting the molten metal. This ceramic shell is itself baked in a special kiln at some 1800 degrees. It is in this heating process that the wax model melts and is lost, hence the term lost wax method. Remaining inside, however, is the perfect impression of the original wax model. The now ready ceramic shell is placed into a bed of sand for support for when the bronze is poured into it. The molten bronze is heated in a crucible to upward of 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, out of which it is immediately poured down the now open channels that flow into the empty mold, filling it to the brim with glowing bronze. Left to cool, when ready, the ceramic shell can begin to be broken away. In fact, it already started cracking in the cooling process. Sandblasting is then used to remove all final traces of the shell from the now hard bronze sculpture. And it is also at this stage that if a bronze is cast in separate pieces, it is welded together. The surface of the bronze is carefully inspected, and in a process called chasing, Work is done with a variety of handheld grinders, welders, and tools that bring the piece into a form that matches the original as closely as possible. The final step in the foundry is creating the patina, or coloring, on the surface of the bronze. Various chemicals and methods are used to create a variety of effects, from the subtle to the dramatic. The chemicals accelerate and control effects that might otherwise take centuries to achieve. As a finishing touch, a base is often put on the sculpture before it leaves the foundry. Because of the extensive amount of work done by hand to each piece, each bronze addition will be slightly unique.